Hello, I'm Pierre Abis of Union Bank. Diversity is one of our most closely held values. That's why we're proud to honor local heroes in celebration of Latino Heritage Month. Now, let's meet one of our honorees. My name is Rose Amador LeBeau. I am President and CEO of the Center for Training and Career, CTC. Our mission is to help people through employment and education become self-sufficient. We have a day worker center. We have educational programs so people can get their GEDs. We serve a variety of people, people who've just become unemployed, people who have never worked. We work with homeless people. We work with people who have just gotten out of prison and have to re-enter the workforce. So we're full service. Now we have our own facility, and so it enables us to expand programs in response to the needs of the community. I think it's seeing people make the change, become successful, uh, make that transition, and actually having an impact on people's lives, a positive impact. To see these success stories is what it's all about. This moment has been made possible by Union Bank in partnership with KQED. Good evening. Welcome to Native Voice TV. I'm Sundas Martinez. And I'm Sewa Pili Rose Amador. And together we are Native Voice TV. We are the Indigenous people. Yes, we are. Yes. Well, it's my pleasure to introduce an Indigenous California State Assemblyman, Assemblyman Simon Salinas. Welcome, Assemblyman. Thank you, Rose. Welcome. Pleasure to be here, Sundas. Thank you. And I wish we had more Indigenous <laughs> Assemblymen, right. but we're getting there. Assembly <laughs> people, right. members. That's right, yeah. So tell us, this is your, you're almost completing your first term, mm -hmm. right? This is my third term. Third term? Right. So Fifth you're year. termed Fifth out. Year. I'm termed out next year, yeah. Ooh, then that means there's yeah. exciting things ahead That's that right. we'll talk about. <laughs> but tell us, some, uh, some of the things that um, our Native American audience would be interested in learning that you've been working on. I think that there's several issues, and I think mm -hmm. it, it all goes back, and we were talking briefly a little bit about, you know, what motivated me to run. I, I come from a large family of farm workers. We're from some small towns in over in the hills of Mexico in San Luis Potosí. Mm -hmm. And so we came over to Texas and were field workers. But one of the things that, that I've always worked on it on my fifth year at the assembly is to understand and educate people about what it takes for sovereign nations and indigenous people to feel like they're part of a, of a culture, part of, mm -hmm. a, of a society, and that is about respect. One of the, one of the issues that we worked on that was very controversial that finally got settled was the issue of mascots. Mm -hmm. And now to some that might not be a very important issue, but from my perspective, it was about respecting what Native Americans would want. Mm -hmm. If, if uh, high school has a mascot that's a Redskins and there's a group Native American that says, we think that is offensive, we don't like it, then that school should respect that and get some other, name it after a flower or a, or a, or a, or a fish or something like Absolutely. that. But, and so that, that also, but, but that was somewhat of an issue where some tribes were saying, well, in our community, it's okay. It's a source of pride to have that. Mm -hmm. Then I said, then that's fine. They, they ought to respect that. And so it was about, I think, educating our state to mm -hmm. say, well, while well, we've made some progress, if some group objects to it, then there ought to be some respect for it. So right. that was one of the very it, important Yeah, bill. a lot yeah. of it depends on, I guess, the, because there's the, what's the San Diego Aztecs or right. something the like Aztecs, that. Uh -huh. And it depends on, you know, the way it's portrayed, as you say, right. if it's mm -hmm. the red skins, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, Yeah, but a lot like, of the times you have a, a, a face, a character's oh, face. That's, right. that's or, or it's demean, it it's demeaning or they're yeah. wearing the wrong type of, you know, headdress or something yeah, like that. Right. Yeah. And it really is demeaning, especially Absolutely. with a red skin or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I was watching a TV program earlier, a yeah. show on TV, and the guy had to watch the red skins on. And this particular show was a family show. And they were so careful on not offending anyone else, you know, like other minorities. Mm -hmm. But the guy's walking around with a Washington Redskins shirt on with yeah. this character. That character on the yeah. back, yeah. Which is demeaning. Yeah. And, and, and some will bring up the issue, well, everything's so politically <laughs> correct right now. We can't, well, no. 
there's always a way to dialogue and to talk. Mm -hmm. We worked on another very important issue. I, I chair local government, mm -hmm. so I deal with local governments throughout the state of California, mm -hmm. both cities and counties. One of the issues that always surfaces is sacred sites that right. different tribes have. And mm -hmm. from my perspective, some well, if we allow Native Americans to have control, they can have veto power over cities and counties. Not necessarily. What we ought to do when there's a development going on, potentially there could be a sacred site. Invite mm -hmm. the Native American tribes that are there to come in and, and, and dialogue and, and, and provide some input. And yeah. that's the way you avoid later on from having some conflicts, even going to court to mm -hmm. settle some of these things. But it's a, it's a different way of thinking in terms of how do you include everybody as, as decisions get made that potentially could affect a sacred site that, a, that a tribe right. argues for. I, th right. I think this government has to look at this type of issue in a certain way. Would they appreciate anyone digging up their leaders right. and, their their ancestors. and their sacred ancestors and their leaders? Yeah. Would they appreciate that? Because a lot of that is going on with our leaders and our sacred people that we're getting dug up, put into a museum, you know, by anthropologists and, and saying, okay, these are the Native Americans, you know, but that's a, that's a bad thing. You know, that's really, that's somebody's yeah, that's very disrespectful. Yeah, that's someone's grandparents, grandparents or that's yeah. some traditional leader, you know, right. of, of particular mm -hmm. tribes and stuff. That's like digging up um, George Washington and saying, sure. hey, we're going to put him up, at, uh, up in this little uh, glass case and say, hey, we got George Washington. Yeah. Right. Um, it's the same thing. They have to look at it that way. And it's, it's about educating uh, ourselves. Mm -hmm. I, I've gone to some powwows throughout the state here, and, mm -hmm. and you, you learn, you listen to be able to say, well, what, it, what are the differences between Plains uh, Native American Indians mm -hmm. versus coastal, and, and understand, well, everybody thinks the, the typical stereotype, the teepee or something. Well, not mm -hmm. all tribes yeah. have teepees. There's different types That's of, right. of, of uh, you know, architecture and structures that they use for, for uh, where they lived. Uh, so, so we have to be just open-minded about it, and it applies to any group. I'm, you know, I'm Mexican-American, my parents are from Mexico, but as we looked at history, and as I was growing up as an elementary school kid, there was no history there about the contributions of our community right. to the uh, economic development of this country and, mm -hmm. yeah. and to the history. And so we have to be uh, always cognizant of that and educate those. And the Indians educate. were on both sides of the border, that's too, right. because mm -hmm. the borders weren't there before. That's right. You yeah. know, yeah. So you know, that's, that's so interesting that he we brought look alike. <laughs> that's so interesting that he brought that up as far as the education mm -hmm. of the Mexican American mm -hmm. people is, you know, they have these pyramids over in Mexico. Yeah. But the, 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 the teachers aren't teaching the children that, hey, this took brain power to put this stuff up. This took brain power to design these things, mm -hmm. and you should be proud of your 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 ancient history, right? Mm -hmm. But they're not doing that. You right. know, they're teaching them something else. They're teaching them about George Washington. They're teaching them about this, yeah. which is something they should know, anyways. But they not should their indigenous roots. They should know about Guatemala. Yeah. They should know about their indigenous yeah. roots. And, and as then, well. unfortunately, you have the social ills because we don't educate our children That's properly. Right. We yeah. have kids that kill each other for the color of a handkerchief yep. yes. when they don't realize that our roots are the same. And those of us that have been mm -hmm. involved with the Chicano movement, with the uh, Mecha Movimiento mm -hmm. yeah. Chicano Aslan, mm -hmm. that almost connects us That's because right. maybe our ancestors came from the Southwest and as yeah. they were traveling down to Mexico, to Mexico well, City and other. Yeah, there's, there's proof that all the Indians from every, everywhere traded in one spot. And one right. of the spots was Chaco Canyon and another spot was Mexico City. At the time it wasn't Mexico City, it was Aslan. But they all did did inter com combine and did interbreed and did yeah. inter trade. Mm -hmm. But when the Europeans came, then they started chopping up the, the you know putting a border here and you yeah. can't go here and you can't go this and now you're reclassified as this person. Now you're reclassified as that person, and then taking the language away, taking our language away, taking yeah. our culture away, and then pretty soon. We think we're someone else. <laughs> That's right. That's <laughs> that right. was the whole goal so, on yeah. some people's yeah. part. Let yeah. me ask you, you know, when the, um, the governor was running for office, he was talking about have the Indians pay their fair share and this whole gaming thing. I haven't heard too much about that. Where is that whole issue at? You know. Well, I, I think with the governor, I think not only with, with Native Americans and their issues uh -huh. and, and the whole issue that we had voted on Prop 1 to allow those, uh, those uh, Native Americans that wanted to have casinos because they had legitimate claims uh -huh. to those lands. Uh, he sort of came in and started taking them on and making some comments that showed, yeah, I think, a, a, a lack of respect. And, yeah. and, and then he takes on the nurses, then he takes on the teachers, public safety. I think this governor, unfortunately, and, and I think he learned this past election, mm -hmm. that in order to be a governor, you have to be a, a listener and you have to have respect for the diversity that we have in this state. Until he understands that, he's going to have problems. Yeah. Because a lot of us also, when he gave our word, and I deal with a lot of uh, constituents that are undocumented workers mm -hmm. that come here and... And he had promised that he would negotiate and compromise on a driver's license for the undocumented work. Right. Up to now, he has gone back on his word. And again, we tell the government, okay, well, what is it that you want? 
and he says, we wa I want this in order to sign it. We give it to him. Well, now I want this. And so you can't keep changing the goalpost. You're either going to work That's with right. this, work on common ground, or, or we're going to have some problems. I think he learned this last one. I'm just hopeful that my last year, at least, we can start focusing on real issues, which is education. We've got housing. That's, that's one of the major issues here in California. People can mm -hmm. afford to live here, especially working people. Yeah. And, and those are the real issues that I think Californians want us to address and address them uh, together. If not, we fight. I mean, I, Tom, when you, when you don't, aren't willing to compromise and to work with us, then the only thing is we can go back to the people and tell them, that's look, right. we tried. We put some propositions that we think make sense. Governor, put in your problem. And, and the, the art of politics is compromise. If he doesn't understand that, then it's, it, it serves no one well. Uh, and, and we end up with very, uh, just wasting time instead of governing, which is what the role that we ought to play as a legislature and the governor. Yeah. That's right. I recently uh, saw you at, at the education hearing. Mm -hmm. um, we have a ways to go, don't we? We do. We do. And one of the things that certainly you deal with issues of education for Native Americans, we've got Latinos that are dropping out at 40, 50 percent. Mm -hmm. And so my comments to the panel is, you know, you get tired of hearing excuses from everyone. So I think at some point we all have to start making excuses. That should not be acceptable. 40 to 50 percent dropout amongst minorities is not acceptable. And then when you've got this global competition now, if we can't prepare our kids to compete with each other. How are they going to compete with students from India, from Pakistan, from China? I mean, and those students are hungry for knowledge, for math, for science. Mm -hmm. We have to do a better job. And it starts with everyone, the corporations here, the governor, the legislature, the parents, and all the school districts saying we are going to educate everyone. We're going to give everybody the opportunity to develop their potential. And I think, frankly, all, it always starts also from showing respect from when the parents mm -hmm. show up with the kids at kindergarten, telling them, okay, you're a Spanish speaker, we respect your language, we respect your culture, but we're going to work hard to make sure your child understands and learns mm -hmm. enough English to compete later on at the university. And so I think you're right. With, with the main thing is respect. A lot of yeah. people just see a person come in, they look at how they dress or how they speak or how they hold themselves and, and they classify them and then, and then they just put them aside. You know, and a lot of it is, is really yeah. uh, the, the respect, how they t treat the yeah. children and how they, how they teach the children and, and how they believe that the child could only learn so much because... They put he, limits on Yeah, they put limits on them. Yeah. yeah. And it's really bad yeah. and it needs, to, it needs to go away. And it's, and it's unfortunate because it starts with individual, respect for individual, and then with countries, hopefully, yeah. too, right. because we live in a very dangerous situation right now. And unfortunately, we've got a federal administration also that seems to mm -hmm. want to run rough shot out there. We have to be able to speak up. I mean, that's our right here as, as Americans that's and American right. citizens. And too yeah. many people sometimes think, well, if you speak up, you're being unpatriotic. Well, I think it's if you don't speak up, you're being unpatriotic. We ought to say we disagree with that policy. And I think that, that makes us, I think, a stronger country. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I, I always try to go back. And I used to teach elementary school and teach students, if you believe in something, you go out there and fight hard for it. There's, there's a process. There's a system in place. Yeah. And if the system isn't responding, then we try to change that system. Because yeah. uh, sure there's a lot of people that disagree with this war. Well, they doesn't have mean people that people fighting for people. It, it, it doesn't mean that they're not patriotic people. Right. They may love this country, but sure. they just disagree with the war. Yeah. But uh, a lot of people think that, oh, they're disagreeing with the war, they're not patriotic. Right. You know, and they'll always, they'll always frame it a certain way. Yeah. Well, you don't support the, the troops. That's nonsense. Yeah. We support yeah. the troops. We know right. they're doing because they have orders. They're That's following, right. and we have to respect that, and we have to honor that. But we don't agree with the policy that comes in and with half-truths, with misguided policy, and then we're supposed to say, well, that's fine. No, it isn't. I think everybody has a, a and we have a responsibility to speak out speak with this out. Patriot Act. Yeah. This is very scary with what comes out right now <laughs> that, that they can wiretap any American citizen. That is scary. Some of us that were here back in the 60s during the Vietnam or during the Nixon era, mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, he broke the law. And no person, mm -hmm. I don't care what president it is, should not be about the law. And if That's we right. allow that to continue, then pretty soon we end up with a, with a society that I certainly don't want to go back and teach my elementary school students. <laughs> yeah. that That's it's acceptable. It's interesting how they have different rules for the Canadian border right. than they have for the Mexican That's border. Right. That's right. And so th those are real things, but that's, I think- Yeah, that's really yeah. racist. It goes back to educating our kids. I mean, one of the, the greatest presidents, the first indigenous president of Mexico, Benito Juarez, yeah. right? And I think he taught us a lesson that too many forgot. El respeto al derecho ajeno es la paz. Yeah. Respect for others' rights means peace. Right. And that is, I know, with the Native American, and is that something that's very important? You give yeah. your word, you keep your that's word. Right. And sometimes we get too I caught up in this stuff. I think we have to all go through a re-education process yeah. and, and also think of ourselves as indigenous rather than this government labeling them as illegal aliens. Yeah. You're an illegal alien. But it's not the truth. They're indigenous. Right. They right. came over here on a boat. Yeah. 
they didn't. No, that's they, right. I mean, <laughs> the the so-called illegal aliens that, that this country marks are, are indigenous to right. this whole West, yeah. Western Hemisphere. Well, and, and it's how they frame yeah. that. I mean, I and I understand why they use those words because they want to. They want Americans to think of this undocumented worker as right. less than human. Yeah. I told my kids, I mean, my, the only it's illegal alien I it's knew. It's a derogatory. Yeah, that's right. I said, yeah. the only illegal alien I knew was Superman. And we made him a <laughs> that's hero. That's right. We made him a hero. <laughs> he was and so a hero. why do we use that against people that are coming over to work hard? Now, certainly we have a right as a country to look at the border, but you do it with respect by that's talking right. to the Mexican president, yeah. investing out there, develop a Marshall Plan like we mm -hmm. did with Germany and Japan after World War II. That's how you gain the respect of, of that country to say help your community also. Now, yeah. Simone, I'm shocked to hear you're already on your third term. It seems like you just <laughs> sped by. But <laughs> yeah, we need you there longer. So, yeah. no, well, <laughs> what, what are the plans? What are the plans? Well, we're starting future? looking at potentially there's, there's a Senate seat that I can look okay. at. I mean, one of the things that I think would be exciting, I've, I've done local government, city mm -hmm. council, supervisor, mm -hmm. now state assembly. One of the areas that I really also like to look at is a congressional to go to Washington, be, be the representative there. Certainly we have a Democrat that's there and I work with Congressman Sam Farr a lot. And so hopefully at some point when he decides it's time for him to retire, that would be, I think, a challenge for me to, to look at it and continue to, I think, just promote a basic, very basic fundamental thing mm -hmm. about respect and about working on real issues that I think people want to, uh, to, to have their legislator or yeah. their congressman uh, focus on. That's right. Yeah. Oh, well, that's exciting. Yeah. Now, how do you see it as far as voter registration and voting? Yeah. We absolutely have to get more yeah. numbers out. We need yeah. more people registered and more people that are registered to vote. That's right. Um, are there any movements right now to encourage that or to work on that? Yeah, we're certainly trying every, every time there's an election or even the off year, mm -hmm. we try to get people to understand the importance of, of voting. And I go to a lot of the uh, areas that I represent where you have a lot of the working families that sometimes work hard, don't participate because they figure their vote doesn't yeah. count. And I always tell them there was a floods of 95 and Pajaro is a very low income, 98% uh -huh. Latino uh, population, a lot of farm workers. And there was a meeting of 500. I didn't represent that area, but the local elected officials said, Simon, come with me there. Uh -huh. Mostly Spanish speakers come and interpret. And so I went and it was about 400 very irate residents and complaining, where's our congressman, where's our supervisor? And I went, I said, look, I don't even represent this area, but I care about this community. Mm -hmm. And I want us, the county to respond, to do things that, that have to be done to help you during these floods. But I asked, but let me ask you a very simple question. This is political. Mm -hmm. Politicians look at numbers. Where do people vote from? And I bet you if I look at Pebble Beach, Carmel, you have 90% participation in voters. Here I said, there's 400 of you. How many of you are citizens that are eligible to vote? About 10 people raised their hand. And I said, how many of you, you voted on the last election? About three. Uh -huh. I said, you want any more reason why they're not here? Yeah. But I bet you 400, if three, 390 of you voted, every, every elected official would be here. That's right. yeah. Because when they came next time, they would say, remember, I was there for you. So I said, the more we participate, and I don't care what, who you vote for, mm -hmm. we need to see those numbers go up. Right. And then you have the, the response from the politicians, because they look at, at the numbers and who's voting. And so my hope is they continue to participate and they continue to become citizens and then registering vote and then actually voting on the day of elections. Great. Yeah. So what area do you cover now? Right now I've got from East San Jose here, the Silver mm -hmm. Creek, uh, the village area, all the way down to 101, all the way down to San Luis Obispo County line. Whoa, so I've got all the Salinas Valley. Area. I go from Silicon Valley to the salad bowl of the world. <laughs> all the, uh, the Salinas Valley. I've got all San Benito County and then Watsonville in the Santa Cruz area. Wow. So each assembly district is made up of between 450 to 500,000 uh, people that, wow. that reside in those, in those uh, assembly it's districts. It's a large area. Yeah. Yeah, huh. very large geographically. So it takes you have a Rose living in your area. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> I love the district. You. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, You're so my representative. Yeah. Very uh, nice. So tell us, what initiative are you working on now? I'm sure you're working on several, but we're we're doing a lot. I think some that's important for our area here is you know we're looking at some bonds uh, that oh. we're going to work with the governor on, and those are going to be very important for the San Jose area for our region to make sure we get our funding for transportation projects, housing and schools, very okay, important good, project good. that we're going to work on yeah, this, this coming yeah. year. There's so many, you know, I remember when I was going into a high school, there was, we had buses and everything took us yeah. everywhere. Now the kids are, are having to walk or take the county transit and, and yeah. there's yeah. no public schools or no public yeah. buses for them. Yeah. And that's just another barrier that they have to go right. through, you know, that's kind of discouraging for them. Well, and, and that's what's sad. One of the first things that we had to battle the governor on was in, when he wanted to cut funding for the, the, the community college, CSU and UC system. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to tell about 25,000 
high school students that did everything we asked them, had taken all their college courses, mm -hmm. said, sorry, we don't have any more space for you. Wow. And we thought that was a travesty. And so what we did, we told the governor, if you don't put the monies back here, we're not going to put a single Democratic vote for this budget. He put the money back in there. But those are the fights that we have continuously yeah. to, to do when, when in reality we ought to be making sure that everybody, that we motivate everybody, because we're going to need those engineers. We need those yeah. math That's folks. Right. We need those science right. uh, students graduating and then working in That's our roots. In our area. Yeah. That's where they, yeah. they, they created all that. So you guys should have voted for Bustamante. <laughs> That's right, because <laughs> you don't know all these battles that go on behind yeah. the scenes. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it's yeah. not just the Terminator because these movies, you know. I mean, this is impacting our lives, yeah. everything yeah. he's doing. And, and this is where we get the, the Chambers of Commerce and other businesses say, it's to your interest to work with us, to uh, you know, align yourself with us so that we mm -hmm. ask the governor to, to put the resources for those schools. There's no reason why you know, students should be taking the public transit That's right. or where parents have to you know, commute them. We, we ought to be able to fund schools adequately. It's, it's, it's sad when you know, students have to share textbooks or where they don't have algebra teachers to teach them, and yet we're going to yeah. test them on a test when they're not prepared for that. I mean, those are the challenges that we ought to be looking at and overcoming. How important is it for people to write their representatives or write, you know, letters about things or, you know, call? It's, it's very important. I mean, on every tough issue we take, we keep a tally, you know, who's calling from my, our, our district. And certainly I, oh. I'll call sometimes when I have to say, look, here's this bill, this legislation. What do you think about it? I'll call superintendents. I'll call community members. And, you know, just to try to get a feel. What do you think about this issue? And, and, and so we, we gauge the public sentiment on that. So it's very important. So and I, I encourage folks to. A lot of times people think, yeah. you know, why do I, I don't, yeah. no one's going to listen to me. Yeah. It doesn't matter. But it is it, important it, it is for important. people to call yeah. or, yeah. you know, yeah. write a letter or an email sure. or, you know, yeah. about these yeah. different Yeah, it takes issues. some time to do it because a lot of times, you know, sometimes you can't get through on the phone. You yeah. get all this voicemail and stuff. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I keep trying. Yeah. Um, the other issue I was thinking about is alternative schools. What's your issue on alternative schools as far as? Charter schools? Yeah, charter, charter schools. schools. Yeah. No, I think those are, those are areas that we ought to explore. I know in San Jose, for example, the downtown preparatory college, I downtown think. Downtown college prep. The C, yeah. uh, that is, is showing some very positive signs of how to take some of the students that aren't doing well in your traditional schools, mm -hmm. high schools, mm -hmm. going on, and then all of a sudden being motivated right. and being taught to uh, to to dream about going to college and, and so yeah. they're working. So I think we ought to explore those and, yeah. and those are good ways to together a community that's interesting. You know, we have an idea, a way to mm -hmm. charter a, a school mm -hmm. and be able to bring in the type of motivation sometimes that for some students might work. For indigenous people, if you teach them about their history, oh, they yeah. might get turned that's on and a, say. That's a great you know, impact. You yeah. Know. yeah. That's a sense of pride and everything, because I remember yeah. growing up, and they used to tell me that um, my forefather was, you know, George Washington. I always used to scratch my head, how can he be my forefather? He you know, doesn't even look like me. You know, but it's just stuff like that. Yeah, if he gives someone a sense of pride and sense of history and sense of their culture, they're going to do better, because yeah. they know where they're coming from and we'll, we'll know where they're going to go. Well, and, and, and think about it, because it does create, well, you know, they talk about motherhood and apple pie. I say, well, in our house, we eat tamales and yeah. menudo. I mean, how could <laughs> they be my forefathers? What, That's right. <laughs> <laughs> when did they eat our kind of food? And so mm -hmm. I yeah. think it's important to recognize it. And that helps. I mean, a lot of people might put down making a child feel good about themselves, self-esteem. And That's now right. we know if they got good self-esteem, they're not going to abuse their bodies. They're not going to inject the stuff that kills them and the That's drugs. Right. But, but if we don't take the time to do that because we had a system that oppressed a community. Yeah. So that a community, all, all they knew was oppression, and so sometimes they ended up oppressing themselves because they had no sense of the history. They didn't understand that, that the uh, scientists, the engineers that built the, 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 you know, the Mayan pyramids and you know, all that stuff that showed a lot of engineering, yeah. a lot of science skills that, that our ancestors had. Yeah, they did uh, some incredible things, and, and that was all mathematics, yeah. geometry, trigonometry, and that's all the stuff that they created, that's right. and that's in their DNA, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, and and the kids unfortunately grew up seeing nothing but the Frito Bandito. Yeah, and that's and true. you know the, what the, how they portrayed the indigenous people here yeah. in our country, mm -hmm. and so that that there was a price to pay for that, and it meant we right. lost a whole generation yeah. of students. I think the the other important thing is too is that uh, once you do that, then then you get the children growing up, and they see, hey, we're from the same group of people, or we're from the same group or area, and then that kind of puts a a stop in the North Annual and the Sun Annual thing where they're fighting each other, but they're the same people. Mm -hmm. I mean, because the gang issue is really bad, you know. Rather than fighting each other, they need to come together yeah, and be and one. And the colors are sacred. They, they mm -hmm. are, you know, represent the directions. It's not, it's nothing to be using for gang, you know, Sorry. related issues. Right. It's, 
Yeah. So and I think a another lot of education. yeah. Another important thing for the, a lot of the gang members to to realize is is this whole situation with the North Daniels and San Daniels started in the prisons, yeah. and the reasons why is they wanted to control them because they were too bi one too big of one group, so they gave one better mm -hmm. privileges and they gave the other ones no privileges, yeah. so then that started a conflict between mm -hmm. the two, and then that's how they separated. Yeah. It's a yeah. form of control. Yeah, it's a form of control. Yeah. Yeah, divide and, and conquer. Divide and conquer, and it's yeah. still working. And you know, hundreds and thousands of, uh, of Mexica young Mexicans are killing each other and fighting each other over something that was created back in the late 50s, early 60s, in a prison. Yeah. That's right. And it needs to stop, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. we have a few yeah. announcements, so let's oh, see great. what's going on in the community. I don't mm -hmm. think we have any events. We just have some. Oh, uh, do we? Okay. Okay, listen to Indian Time Radio, KKUP 91.5 FM, every Tuesday from 8 to 10 p.m. with Jack Hyatt and David Romero. Oh, we want to thank you, Assembly. Thank you. And some really good here issues. With us today. Really good. And um, you're working on some really great things, and we hope to see you. We will work to, with you to <laughs> you. see you at higher office yeah. because you've um, contributed so much to our community. And we need your voice there. We need more voices there. Yes, definitely. Appreciate it. Yeah. So you let us know uh, <laughs> when any you decide yeah. what you're going to run for, and we'll any, be right there. Yeah, any way we can support you. And something you can tell, like, there's some students, Native Americans saying, and it, it, I used to tell them, aim for the moon, because even if you miss, you'll be among the stars. Yeah. Right. And that comes from an anonymous that we tell our students to always aim for, have high dreams, and, and keep going. And they should. They yeah. should. They have a very rich history, yes. rich roots. Right. And yeah. indigenous roots. And indigenous roots, yeah. So thank you again. And watch us every Sunday at 6 o'clock. And you can become a sponsor, too. We, we do yes. appreciate our sponsors, the Washoe Tribe uh, of Mark, California, Nevada. Uh, also Mark Rickard of Light Lanes uh, Communications. And Center for Training and Careers. Yes. And it would be a nice Christmas present if we got a new sponsor. So, that would yeah. be wonderful. Yeah, Don't forget Ellips over there. Pick up their <sighs> newspaper every week. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next Sunday. Good, Good night. night.